All right, so I need to give you guys a way to calculate the d area vector. So the reason I need to give you a way to calculate the d area vector is we need to be able to calculate the surface version of a line integral, right? So what I'm kind of thinking here is I'm thinking, OK, I remember line integrals as I integrate over a curve C f dotted with dr, right? And then there's a way for me to actually execute this, right? Like I parameterize the curve. So I get like r of t is x of t and y of t, right? And then I do the integral from t beginning to t end, right, of what? Good. Your vector field evaluated at r of t, right? Okay, that's going to be a vector categorically, right? And then I'm going to dot with the derivative, so r prime of t, and then we'll integrate dt, right? Okay, so I should be able to emulate the same thing, right? So my goal is going to be to think that whole business really hard at a surface integral. Like a block, right? So I'm thinking, okay, so I'm going to integrate over a surface of vector field dotted with the area, and this guy is going to be the flux. You guys all good with that? Okay, so to do this, I'm going to assume that I can parameterize my surface S somehow. Cool, cool. Okay, so first things first, you parameterize your surface S. So you get S, right? And at S, I'm going to think R of. Depending by the x, y possibly. Yeah, theta x and y, or theta and phi, or whatever and whatever. So I'm going to write u and v, right? Okay, so I got some parameterization of this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And now, oh, bugger. So remember when we were doing line integrals, right? I need to calculate how much does the vector field agree with the direction you're going, right? To figure out whether it's helping or hurting you. <laughs> but here there's all sorts of crap, right? Yeah. So I'm definitely going to need a unit vector and a normal. So I need a unit normal vector. So do we have to use, because there's a u and a v, do we also have to use two different interpretations? Okay, so I'm going to just draw my handkerchief, right? And I'm going to think, okay, that's the u direction and that's the v direction just for kicks. You guys good with this? Okay, now R of U and V is not going to be particularly useful to you because remember the R vector points from the origin, right? Yeah, I'm not going to clutter my picture up with this, but like someplace over here there's an origin. It could be over here, or it could be in that corner over there, or it could be up there, right? And your R vector points from the origin out to this surface, right? So that vector is not going to tell you anything about perpendicular to the surface. You guys all see that? So I need something else. You guys see that? Crap. OK, so I'm going to think, OK, so I'm standing right here, right? And I need a vector that points parallel to the surface that way and parallel to the surface that way to figure out which direction my head is pointing. You guys see that? So I like that thought. So one of these directions is like kind of increasing in u, right? And the other one's like kind of increasing in v. You guys see that? 
So what if that was R U going that way? What do I mean by R U? The partial derivative. Yeah, that's going to be the partial derivative of R with respect to U. You guys see that category of object makes sense now? Because I've got a function of two variables. So if I'm going to do D D U here, right? Which is kind of my analog for R prime. I need partials instead of actual hard derivatives. You guys see that? So I'm going to take R U, that's going to be a vector. What's the other one going to be? R V. That's going to be R V. Okay, so to blow up my picture here a little bit. This marker one? Which means I have currently me, right? And it, really, I'm just kind of playing in here as a standby for that normal vector, right? And then there's an RU one direction and an RV the other. So how do you get something that's perpendicular to RU and RV? You cross that in the opposite. Yeah, so you need cross product, right? You guys all see that? And you have to be just a titch careful here. Why? You don't want it to be upside down. But you yeah, you need to down. make sure that you're getting it to point the right direction. You guys see that? So if I'm doing a flux integral, right, it's going to have to be an orientable surface to start with. And they're going to have to give me an orientation. And when I parametize, I'm going to have to think about which direction is going to match that orientation and which direction is going to not match. Why do I keep doing this thing with my hand? It's the right hand rule. Yeah, the cross product obeys the right hand rule, right? You guys all see that? So it needs to point up or case. something, right? Okay, so ooh, hmm, cool. So the area, right? That should be what I'm thinking about. So I'm thinking there's an R U cross R V in there, right? I want to make sure I'm not giving you the goal. Okay. All right. So wait. What does that one have that's extra? So I'm not sure about this yet, right? I'm just like, OK, there's a vector field going on here someplace in the background. And I'm trying to dot this thing with a normal vector, right? You guys see that? OK, so I'm thinking like, all right, uh, I don't know about this thing. I'm thinking that, right? OK, so I need a flow through a patch, right? So that's me saying, all right, there's some little patch of my surface here. You guys all with that? Okay. That's like a change in U by a change in V. So that's here, right? There's some patch going on here. Ooh, let me maybe example myself a little bit. On a sphere, Ooh. what does that patch look like? Circle. Yeah, it looks like a hill. Kind so of. a change in theta looks like a little bit of one of these circles around, right? Yeah. And a change in theta at the bottom looks like another little bit of a circle, right? It looks like that. And a change in phi looks like this and like that, right? So it kind of looks like a top of a hill. Or... Yeah, so it's in particular not freaking flat. You guys see that? I mean, let's do So I'm thinking, all right, so like the flow through a patch should be what? What well, should be the vector field, right? Mm -hmm. Dotted with. Yeah, you want to make sure it's a unit normal vector, right? 
Okay, so I need a unit normal, right? And this is a dot product, so this thing's a vector, right? But it's a flow through a patch, right? So I'm how much do they agree by what? Multiply by the area of the patch. Good, perfect. Multiply by the area of the patch. And that object is scalar multiplication, right? Okay, so I think I'm ready to make my DA. So it should be the this stuff, right? Because I've got an F in there. Okay, so now I need to figure out that stuff. So I need a unit normal vector. So I figured out there's an RU and an RV, and I cross them and I get this normal vector. But that normal vector... It's not, it doesn't have a scalar. You need to make it a unit. Yeah, it's not a unit vector, right? Okay, so I need to make it a unit vector. Dude, that's going to suck to calculate, right? Okay, thankfully there's this other thing. You need to multiply by the area of a patch, right? Oh, which is the magnet. Yeah, and remember there's that thing about when you cross products, you get the area of that parallelogram, right? So this is going to be the area of the patch, which is, again, the magnitude of R U cross R B. And then there's a, yeah, there's a D whatever, D whatever, right? There should be a change in whatever, D change in whatever. So this is D, U, D, V, or vice versa. You see that? Okay. Okay, so in the end, what I can do is I can do, okay, I need a double integral, right? What is U? beginning to U end and the other is beginning to be end? Yeah, I'm going to write that, but keep in mind it might not be quite that simple. Yeah, okay. You guys see that? So I'm going to write here something like U beginning, U end, oh, I should do them in the other way. So V beginning and V end, and U beginning and U end, but I've assumed that this is a, yeah, I've assumed that this is square at least with respect to the two variables that you're inputting, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. You guys see that? Yeah. Like, you should be able to use this to find the, to find the flux through a patch that looks like this on here, mm -hmm. right? By thinking, okay, like, there's a function of theta on one side and a function of theta on the other, and then I'm going to integrate out the phi's afterwards. You guys see that? Yeah. Oh, I split this the other way. So this is a function of, oh no, it's a function of theta and a function of theta, and then a, func and then a range in phi's. So you could have something a little bit more complicated in here. If it's a little bit messy, I would really recommend you reparametize so it isn't a little bit messy. You can usually get away with making this thing a square. Cool, cool? Okay, and then you're gonna do F, but F's probably given in X, Y's, and Z's, right? So you do R of U and V? Yep, so you need to convert it to U's and V's, right? So you do F of U, or sorry, F of R of U and V. And then you need to dot product with, yeah, and thankfully, really, you can slash these guys, right? Yeah. So you just need RU cross RV. And DU DV. So say that again, Chris. No, no, that, no, I remember the cross product. It's just a vector dot of a vector. Yeah, so let's check out the categories, right? Mm -hmm. So this thing's going to be a vector, right? Mm -hmm. That's a vector valued function of a 
well, very confusingly, of a vector value function, right? But I can still do that, yep. right? Yeah, and then we're dotting with this guy's a vector, vector. right? Oops. V is a shit choice. <laughs> So this is a vector dotted with a vector is a scalar, and that thing's going to depend on u's and v's and u's and v's. And then I'm integrating u's and v's. So this is all tall. This whole kerjigger is going to be a scalar. And what is that scalar going to mean? That's going to mean the total flux through this surface, right? It's just the patch though, right? So this would be just a patch, right? And then I integrated all the patches. You guys see that? Yeah. So the area, magnitude, R U R V, cross R V. We also have the D U D V. That's another area. Yeah, so that's the area of a patch is, so this object here, the area of a patch, mm -hmm. is the magnitude of RU cross RV evaluated at your special point. Mm -hmm. But then you're scaling it down by delta U and delta V. Okay. You guys all see that? Cool. Questions, mm -hmm. deals? No? Okay, cool. We need to do an example, right? Usually. Okay. 